Hello and welcome to this interview on France 24. Our guest today is the President of the Republic of Iraq, Jalal Talabani. At a crucial time, at a key period for this country since Iraq has at long last a government after eight months of crisis. Hello, Mr. President. Thanks for being our guest. Thank you. It's still slightly confused about the future of this government, mainly on one point, which is what will be the role of the Sunnis. Will all the communities play an equal role in this government, and especially what will be the, the, the role of the Sunnis? Of course, all the communities will be represented in this government. Our government will be a national sharing of power representing all the components of Iraqi society, notably the Sunni Arabs, the Sh Shiites, the Turkmens and the Kurds. So it will be a national partnership. Iraq cannot be governed only by one community. Mr. Alawi, who is leading the Iraqi bloc, who won the elections after having announced that he would take part in the government, seemingly withdrew, saying that this was a comedy. Isn't this worrying you? I would like to correct this. It isn't true what you've just said. The Iraqi bloc did not win an, an outright majority. It won 93 seats. This means that the Iraqi bloc has obtained the largest number of members of parliament. Mr. Halawi has decided, he responded to Mr. Barzani's initiative and he has decided to participate in the government. So there is a signed agreement to this effect. His bloc, Iraqia, has participated and currently it's Mr. Usama al Nujaifi uh, of this bloc which is presiding over parliament. And there are other representatives of this bloc who hold several posts such as Vice President, Vice Prime Minister Mr. Alawi officially is currently participating in the Iraqi government. The leadership of the Iraqi bloc presided over by Alawi uh, is run by a collegial presidency. Several leaders have asserted that they will participate in the government. I have received uh, news from three persons, Mr. al Nujaifi, Mr. Mutlak and Mr. Isawi. All three have declared their participation in the future government. Well, there are talks about creating a new institution called the Council of Political Strategy. I'd like to know what would be exactly the role of this council, and especially, will it be a monitoring council of Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki? This National Council is an important body. The representatives of all the blocs within the government will be participating in this council. We have proposed Mr. Alawi as chairman of this National Council of Strategic Policies. It will study all the important policies and strategies in Iraq. As regards the supervision of the government, of the Maliki government, it's the role of the Iraqi parliament to monitor the government and it is its role and the president as well as the president of the republic this national council will study will consider all political proposals in Iraq and will ask for clarifications by the, the government. It's going to be an advisory role then? No, not an advisory role. The decisions will be made will be made unanimously and they will be executed as such. 
And as you know, we have a constitution, we have to comply with the constitution. The constitution has uh, laid down the powers of the president and of the prime minister and of this uh, council. The powers of this council will be laid down by a law passed soon by parliament. Do you think that the conditions are fair for an end to the violence we witnessed in the past weeks, especially quite recently against the Iraqi Christians? The crimes perpetrated against the Christians are crimes which have been condemned by all Iraqis, by the Iraqi government, by the Iraqi parliament. These are crimes perpetrated by criminal gangs and in particular the Al-Qaeda gang and uh, they have also shed Sunni, Arab and uh, uh, blood. And these gangs sometimes find pretexts to commit crimes. We believe in a government based on a national partnership. This government will fight against this organization, this criminal organization, especially after the commitments made by the neighboring countries to fight this criminal terrorist organization. So I want this terrorist organization to be eliminated, to be eradicated next year, particularly the Iraqi people are very saddened by the actions of this organization. There's a lot of hatred and all the Iraqis are prepared to fight this terrorist organization. Do you think that the Iraqis reached a situation where they can fight on their own the inter-ethnic violence or do you need the support of the Americans? We don't need the support of the Americans currently. The U.S. Army has withdrawn from all the provinces, provinces of Iraq. They are now only located in some, some areas. The Iraqi armed forces are now in control of the country, and we're sure that the Iraqi armed forces are competent and can ensure security in Iraq particularly the training of these armed forces which have very sophisticated weapons. A touchy question. The former Foreign Affairs Minister of Saddam Hussein, Mr. Tariq Aziz, was condemned to death. In the past, you already opposed yourself against capital punishment. I'd like to know if you intend or not to sign the order to execute Tariq Aziz. No, I will not sign the order to execute Tariq Aziz. I cannot sign an order of this kind because I'm a socialist. I feel compassion for Tariq Aziz because he's a Christian, an Iraqi Christian. In addition, he's an elderly man aged over 70, and that's why I will never sign this order. More generally speaking, do you think that the time of forgiveness has come for a certain amount of individuals who committed crimes in the days of Saddam Hussein? Yes, absolutely. I think the page, the days of execution and assassinations are past, except with regard to crimes perpetrated recently in the Cathedral of Our Lady of Perpetual Support and the crimes against Shiite pilgrims and holy places. Our, ours is a policy of clemency, pardon and national reconciliation. We must minimize this kind of orders of execution. A question about the role of Iran in Iraq. A certain amount of people have the feeling that Iran is the country pulling strings, in fact, in Iraq, and they are concerned about the role played indeed by Iran in your country. Is it concerning you sometimes? 
This accusation is unfounded. This accusation against the Iraqi people is unfounded. The Shiites, who represent the majority of people in Iraq, these Shiites uh, report to Ayatollah al-Sistani, who is a great religious leader and is, uh, doesn't agree with the theory of Vilayet al faqi the religious guide who reigns over Iran. Moreover, the Iraqi people no longer wants ex external interventions of whatever kind. And uh, it's, uh, we know that some neighbors want to intervene in Iraq, not only Iran, Turkey also, uh, especially at the, during the recent elections. But I mean that the Iraqi people refuse external interventions, including Iranian intervention. We insist on the fact that the Iraqi people should be free to pass the laws they wish and to hold elections as they like. And there is a, the, uh, the official policy of Iran uh, disagreed with Mr. al-Maliki, but he still became prime minister. Relations between France and Iraq have been normalized. Do you think that France could be more present in Iraq? Absolutely, yes. I think that France must be more present, more active in Iraq. Our relations have reached a high level of development. Franco-Iraqi relations, especially since the election of President Sarkozy and the appointment of our friend Bernard Kushner to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the relations between our two countries have uh, evolved uh, very positively in all areas, and we think that we must continue to strengthen our good relations. We have, there are no obstacles to uh, developing these excellent relations between our two countries. Mr. President, thank you for having answered our questions. You were in Paris for the meeting of the Socialist International. Thank you. It was the interview on 24. Stay tuned for more news to come.